Hello, I'm Tony. This is SV Tabadja. We are building a cruising sailboat. This one behind me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a boat designed to be lived aboard and I certainly intend to do exactly that once it's in the water. And as you may know, we're getting very, very close to that. In fact, I've just had some, some very good news on that front this morning that I'll share with you later in this video. Um, you may well also know that last week uh, was the first attempt to move her up to a marina and that didn't go according to plan. So um, the only thing to do in response to that was to carry on ticking a few bits off the list, uh, getting her ready to go. So that's what I've done this week and um, started off this week. You may remember that I'd made up two sections of, of a second catch for the lazarette hatch and started off this week fitting that.
let's see if it shuts. So up in the cockpit here, um, and we put the bimini back up again, Kerry and I stood it up just to get a bit of shade in here and whatever, because um, <clears throat> of course I didn't know when the next appointment would be for moving. But before I did that, um, there was one thing I wanted to do to this to this rear archer that I just turned you around. And that is, I needed a couple of loops on here to run rails back to the aft arch there and uh, we'll run wires I'll turn it around we'll 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 run wires there uh, that will be detachable to make gates you know so you can get for boarding and swimming and nice things like that so just welded them on and then Kerry and I stood all this up again put it back up and uh, it will stay there till we've got a new appointment meanwhile I've also bought some some tin cable, two different sizes of tin cable, and a, a junction box. And I'm thinking about the wiring for the for the solar panels. Um, I've got a deck plug. I'll just show you that. I've got a deck plug up there by the by the leg of the bimini there, um, and it's all wired through inside the boat to there to the controllers and whatever. But I also need to think about the wiring for from there up to the panels on top of the bimini. So been doing a bit of planning on that front. Is that faster than hammer and chisel? Sorry? Is it any faster? No, but it's easier. It's easier, <laughs> fair enough, yeah. It's not faster at all, actually. No, <laughs> no. So, in the interests of facilitating the extraction of the boat from its current location, I decided, and I think I mentioned it last week, that we take the post out the out of the front of, of the entrance way there to, to widen the entrance way, make it easier for the truck to get in. And uh, Kerry and I did that, and now if I spin you around, you'll see we got this lovely wide entrance way to the driveway, post gone, and it should be much easier to get back there. Isn't that a beauty? So the first thing I've learned is do not take that screw out before you take that cover off. That <laughs> unsprings the entire starter mechanism and then you have to wind it back up to get it back in. It smells of old petrol.
And now a tale of two things that probably stem from a very, very similar era. One of which I've had a very, very long time and the other I picked up recently. Um, they're both probably from the early 70s. And uh, the first one of them is the one that I picked up recently in a flea market and it's this Evin Rude outboard. Evin Rude four horse, two stroke outboard. And uh, I say I picked it up at the flea market for not very much recently. So I thought I'd just have a look around. Ominously, when you open the, the fuel tank, it's stank of petrol that's gone off and I've been in there far too long. Although it was dry, there was nothing in there, but the smell was, was not good at all. Um, that, you, know, you know the smell of petrol has gone bad and that was it. That normally indicates that you're gonna have to go into the carb and clean them out. But I thought I'd give it a go in here. So um, I had a quick look round. I don't know this model, but you know, I'm quite <laughs> familiar with the small Mercuries, but these, these are, I'm not familiar with. So a quick look round. Um, the compression felt good, pulling, you know, on the start of the rope there, the compression felt good. I checked the spark, a lovely strong spark, exactly what you want to see. So um, put a bit of fuel in it just to see, give it a go, but uh, no go. I dropped the float chamber off and, and true enough, it was gummed up in there. Um, you know, give it a clean out and a blow through with the compressor, blew all the jets out, so they're all clean. I know they're all, all flowing nicely. The worst part of it was the needle and seat valve that controls the, the fuel level in the float chamber. And uh, I don't know if you'll see this, but uh, that uh, probably not. It's a tiny little thing, isn't it? That is the, the needle valve and um, the conical end has disappeared. Probably, quite possibly, when I pulled it out because it was so gummed up in there, I had to pull it out with a pair of pliers and maybe it broke off them. I don't know. Anyhow, that's a problem because it floods as soon as you... <laughs> the needle valve doesn't work like that. Um, so I've ordered some new parts. They're on their way and let's see if I can get it running. Now, as I, as I said, one of these will definitely go on the boat and one won't and this one probably won't, to be honest. I, I, you know, it's a bit of fun and... It was cheap, but it's a two-stroke, and, and two strokes, well, they're banned in some places, as you probably know. Not everywhere, by any means. You can use them a lot of places. But um, as I'm sure you know, the problem with two strokes is, is that they pump oil, lubricating oil and unburnt fuel out the exhaust. They, they don't burn cleanly. So some, some of it just comes straight out the exhaust. And in a marine environment, that's not a good thing to be doing, is it? Let's face it. However, I did have a look, inspired by that, I had a look at the price of, of electric outboards, the ones that have the integrated battery, and they're mighty expensive, aren't they? 1,700 or so euros, 1,700, 1,800 for the small ones. It's a lot of money. I think I might be rowing. Well, the other thing I've got that's probably the same sort of era is this winch. And uh, that is certainly going on the boat. In fact, it's very, very nearly fitted now. I made up a while back, you may remember, I made up a little plinth for it. Um, I'd never got further than that, but I've got it fitted now. Winch is ready to go on there. I've just, I had to order some more G10 to make a backing plate. That arrived this morning, so I'm now in a position to do it all and get it fitted. Now it's a very old winch, but it's a beautiful bronze winch, really well made um, and in, on a junk rig you don't really need winches for sail handling certainly not a junk rig of this ilk with with two smallish sails but it's kind of handy to have you never know when you might need to winch something clearly i've got the the capstan on the on the anchor windless that will pull a rope in but it's kind of nice to have one at the aft end as well i feel so so that one's going on there for sure <laughs> So we took that one there. And the one opposite the two. Three. Four. Five. That's it. So we took 
two of those. the hole. There's one. There's the other. Good. Now on top of it. That has a bit of weight. And then we try and screw it on from underneath. So let's hope we can get the screw up here. Good.
And there it is as it stands. Um, got the obligatory six coats of epoxy primer sealer on there, and so far one coat the top coat. And as soon as I finish this video, I should get out and put the second coat of top coat on there. And when that's dry, we'll be able to mount the old winch. Well, make the backing plate and then mount the winch. But there, nearly there. Well, that. Ladies and gentlemen, is it for this week? Um, uh, did I say something about good news? I did, didn't I? Um, this morning, yeah, I phoned the, the transport company again and they gave me an appointment. Um, so Wednesday, next week Wednesday, they're going to move the boat over to in line with the driveway and Thursday the big rig will come and take us up to the, the marina. And we hope that it, <laughs> that it works out this time. It had better had, hadn't it? Uh, I, I, you know, I have every confidence. Uh, they've seen the situation now. They know what they're dealing with. And uh, we'll see. So I'm very, very excited. Very much looking forward to that. And uh, we'll see. I say, uh, next week's video, well, you might see the first move, mightn't you? The second move, you probably won't. It'll probably be two weeks till, till we get that far video wise but um because indeed i bring out videos every thursday evening as you may well know um thank you for watching a massive massive thank you to the lovely people who support us via patreon paypal and uh even on this this youtube was it super thanks stuff uh, yeah, it's very much appreciated guys thank you if you'd like to support the project patreon is uh there's a link to the video descriptions to both the patreon and the paper on me patreon there are some extra videos some extra material over there um which i update i try to update regularly <laughs> i try anyhow um i say thank you for watching we'll be back see you next time bye